Chris Gladys uh, with uh, Lead Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about spine health today. Positions that tend to aggravate uh, the neck uh, the most is usually when we're hunched over um, and so it, when you do things where you round your shoulders over and where you're hunched over and looking down like that that puts a lot of force on the discs uh, uh, and then also can end up aggravating the joints in the back part of the neck. So um, the discs are in front in most patients and everybody and every patient. So and the joints are in the back. So but what happens when you look down for extended periods of time, you aggravate the discs and then when you end up looking up, you can actually catch the joints a little bit too. So so the best position for your spine is to try to sit forward in the chair just a little bit pull your shoulder blades back and our physical therapist will teach patients to act like they're pinching a tennis ball between their shoulder blades and so if you try to pull your shoulder blades back and then try to bring your chin into this position where you're kind of tucking it back like this that's the best position to be in to protect your neck. I think, I think the chair does. Um, I think you know ideally if you if you have the ability to use a standing desk uh, throughout the day, um, I think that standing is sometimes better for your back and your neck than sitting. Um, so, but if you are forced to sit, if you can sit in a chair that has firm support, where you're able to sit forward just a little bit, maybe having some arm rests where you can have your arms down and while you're working, so that's probably the best way to go. Probably the easiest stretch to do is, um, as far as low back pain is concerned, it's called a child's pose, which is actually a yoga position. So it's a position where you're on your knees, you sit back on your heels, and you basically bring your neck down and you bring your arms forward. So um, doing that on the floor a few times a day is probably the best thing to do to keep your back stretched out. It really, it really kind of depends as far as sleep is concerned. Um, you know, obviously, patients can have other conditions that can affect their sleep patterns, um, and so, you know, ideally for the for the low back, if you can figure out a way to sleep on your side, um, that's usually the best way to go because it reduces the tension across the joints. So if you're lifting up a heavy object and, and throughout your back, so the, the two most common conditions that can happen, you can either uh, aggravate the disc, um, there's a condition called an annular tear, which is a precursor of a disc herniation. Um, that's usually what happens when we are in a flexed position and really strain, or you can actually strain the joints in the back part of the spine. So um, I, I'm not opposed to going on bed rest for a short period of time, so I don't like people to be on bed rest for weeks on end, so, but if they need a day, a day in bed, that's fine, so um, using some sort of anti-inflammatory medication, as long as you're not allergic to it, um, it is also very, very helpful in using that for a day or two, so um, ideally, if you do start developing any sort of nerve symptoms in your arms or your legs after a major back or neck injury, uh, you need to call your doctor uh, or call one of us and, and, and be seen. So. I think probably the, the most common cause of a low back injury is improper lifting. Um, so, it, ideally, it probably would be a good thing at some point for everyone to have a visit with a physical therapist just to understand proper lifting mechanics. Um, so, um, if you're lifting something heavy up off the ground, number one, if you can find help, then do that. So, uh, but the, the other thing when you're lifting something heavy off the ground is to try to keep it close to your center of gravity. In other words, you don't want to be outstretched and trying to lift it out here. The further away it is from your center of gravity, the heavier the object is just due to the laws of physics. And so trying to keep something nice and close to you, bending your knees, bending your hips, and trying to keep your back in a, in a, in a straight position while you lift is the best way to do it. So.
Colin uh, trained uh, at a fellowship in Atlanta called Emory. Um, and Emory is very, very well known uh, for certain types of operations. They're actually very good at everything that they do. But in particular, there's an operation where Dr. Crosby comes in from the side or comes in from the flank, which is one of the newer uh, and better ways of, of doing uh, what's called a, a fusion or stabilization procedure. So um, I'm a little bit too old to teach myself new tricks. Uh, and so it was easier for me to hire somebody that specifically wanted to do that. So we brought Colin in and it's been, been great ever since. Having a healthy spine, uh, it requires you to be actively involved every day. Um, core stabilization exercises and making that part of your everyday routine is something that you really have to do. Um, I would highly encourage anyone, any age, uh, to look into either Pilates or yoga, which are basically their uh, exercise regimens that, that require core stabilization. They're very good for your mind and for your spiritual health. Um, and especially in trying times like this, I think that looking for avenues like that that will challenge your bodies and your mind in different ways is, is the best thing to do. So. Thank you all very much for your attention and listening to us. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please look us, up, look us up on our website at www.eliteorthopedic.com. Thank you.